Ito ang mainit na balita at trending ngayon sa mundo ng social media. Marcos at Duterte, matinding sagutan? Matapos ipag-utos ni Pangulong Marcos na dapat managot ang mga sangkot sa Pogo at EJK, abay nagbanta ang Kongreso sa dating Pangulong Duterte. Kaya naman, buwelta ni Duterte. Huwag daw nila akong gawin, just don't fuck with me. Kasi kung kalkalin pa ako nila sa nagginagawa ako na, na trabaho ko, ako tangin na. Talagang babarulin kita pero sabihin mo na hindi ko na trabaho eh. Huwag mo lang akong takot-takot yun na spaing gila. You don't scare me a bit. Galing na ako pagka-presidente, huwag nila akong ganunin. Ang mayor ako, na congressman ako, na presidente na ako. Do not give me that shit. In fairness to the idiots, wala akong na-notice na pupunta ako ngayon. Sabihin mo nga sa uh, hindot na yan. Hindi naman pinalagpas ni Kong Dan Fernandez ang birada ng dating Pangulo. Alam mo, hindi na, na tayo bago doon. Kung baga talagang gano'n na lingguahin ang ating dating uh, Pangulo. Uh, kasi alam nyo, yung mga salita po ng ating dating Pangulo, no, uh, medyo may pagkasamang uh, diversionary. Eh. Alam natin that uh, he wanted to uh, divert the issue to other ano, eh, mga petty uh, languages like that. No? Uh, nakita naman natin na lagi yung mga pronouncement ng ating uh, former president kapag medyo may mga mabibigat na mga issue na dapat tarapin. So, ito naman eh, talagang issue na dapat niyang uh, uh, puntahan. At uh, alam mo, kasi umaasa din ng uh, Quadcom. Alam mo, kasi yung uh, words can be spoken, eh, di ba? Uh, freely. But numbers cannot be uh, denied. Eh. And uh, these data that are uh, being gathered by the uh, PNP are uh, legitimate. And uh, comparing to the uh, words that are being um, Uh, delivered uh, by them ay uh, siyempre mas paniniwalaan mo yung uh, datos. So, the people can uh, already uh, decide on this. At makikita natin that uh, marami na sa ating mga kababayan ang naunawaan talaga yung mga uh, sitwasyon at yung naging uh, predicament natin nung panahon ng dating uh, Pangulo. At uh, masasabi natin na mas tahimik ngayon, kakaunti yung mga namamatay, uh, hindi kumpura nung nakaraang administrasyon and uh, I think uh, the people right now uh, Uh, feel more safer. Buwelta naman ni Duterte kung sakaling papasok na ang ICC at siya'y arestuhin. Sinasabihin mo sa ICC, I'm addressing to the ICC. Pumunta kayo dito at bibitahin ko dyan sa Akasya. Lolo nila. Ito naman lahat. Ano po ba ang gusto ng mga gago? Kaya naman sagot ng dating senador tungkol sa mga pahayag ni Duterte tungkol sa ICC. Yan naman po ang ICC, hindi yan kagaya, kagaya ng mga korte sa Pilipinas na kailangan certified through copy, ganyan, ano? kasi meron silang way to validate it. So meron tayong pinadalang transcript, tapos sila naman itatranscribe nila yung hearings na naka-upload naman sa internet. Eh. Yung problema nila ni Digong sa kadaldala niya, sa kayabangan niya, di ba, kakaproject niya, kasi pag nagpo-project siya na umaamin siya, ako yan! Etong sila ba to? Ano yan? Commander ng death squads yan, mga ganun ganon At ano kasi no, kagaya nga before that mas malalim pa yung mga na-forward natin na video tungkol sa statement si Duterte, na yung sinabi niya yung my order is shoot to kill. I don't care about human rights. Yun napakabigat nun. That is policy. Tapos yung statement na yun nakalagay dito sa Memorandum 60 ni ni Bato, nakalagay is ano? Uh, reference, verbal directive of uh, President Duterte. Tapos nakalagay doon sa body ng Memorandum 16 na yon to neutralize. Eh, ang neutralize sa uh, military and PNP is to kill. Maliwanag yon. Kasi kung sasabihin mong uh, arrestuin, to arrest ang sasabihin mo. But since hindi nila inimbisigan, hindi nila hinuli, ibig sabihin nun, maliwanag na yon ang order. Narito naman ang matinding pagdinig sa kabalbalan di umano sa pondo ni Inday Sara. Would you know Ms. Villa del Rey if during the time of Vice President Robredo there is good governance program also? Yes, Your Honor. And under Vice President Robredo's good governance program, may kasama po ba doon na maintenance of safe houses? Wala po, Your Honor. Then can you please enlighten us? Bakit po dito sa Good Governance Program ni Vice President Duterte may nasamang maintenance of safe houses under confidential fund? 
I'm sorry, Your Honor, uh, wala po akong knowledge doon sa disbursement and utilization ng confidential funds. Nonetheless, Mr. Chair, I wish to manifest that although both Vice President Robredo and Vice President Duterte. Congresswoman Luistro, maybe we can ask uh, Attorney Sanchez because I noticed that uh, her name was included in that uh, document. Ms. Sanchez, Attorney Sanchez? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Do you, uh, do you confirm that Vice President Robredo has good governance program also? Yes, Mr. Chair. Would you Sorry. confirm that under Vice President Robredo's good governance program, there is no confidential fund? Yes, Mr. Chair. And Honor. would you further confirm that under Vice President Robredo's good governance program, there is no maintenance of safe houses? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Please enlighten us. Bakit po pagdating sa programa, same program, good governance program of Vice President Duterte, biglang nagkaroon ng confidential fund, biglang nagkaroon ng maintenance of safe houses? Your Honor, uh, the budget was proposed by the Office of the Vice President. Um, and it would be for different programs, Your Honor. Uh, but as to the details, Your Honor, I do not have uh, information on the specific uh, details and items to be spent under the confidential expense. Would it be correct to say that the key officials of Vice President Duterte altered the menu of the good governance program of then Vice President Robredo? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, I, I think that would be a, a possible explanation, Your Honor. And are they really allowed to alter the program? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, from my understanding, Your Honor, um, yes, uh, that may be allowed because uh, in the budget of the OVP, there is a general uh, item, Your Honor, only, which is the good governance program. In other words, Attorney Sanchez, that good governance program is just a nomenclature. Uh, it's like and a, as to w what will be the menu under the good governance program, that will depend on the vice president. Am I correct? Mr. Chair, Your Honor, that is my understanding, Your Honor. And who therefore prepared the program of the good governance program under the time of Vice President Duterte? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, that would be the office of the vice president, Your Honor. Can you please mm -hmm. cite the name? Who in particular among the key officials prepared? Uh, Your Honor, I am... I do not have the specific information on who the particular uh, persons who prepared, but the request was submitted to the Budget Division, Your Honor. Nevertheless, Mr. Chair, in spite of the admission of Attorney Sanchez that they can alter what is clear, the program Good Governance under Vice President Duterte suddenly include confidential fund and maintenance of safe houses, items which were never seen and which were never included in the program of Vice President Robredo. Am I correct, ma'am? That is correct. Another important observation, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> Attorney Sanchez. Last quarter of December 2022, OVP spent 16 million for maintenance of safe houses. Do you confirm? Uh, I have no personal knowledge, Your Honor. May we know if any one of you has personal knowledge about this? Ms. Villa del Rey? None, Your Honor. Nevertheless, let me finish this manifestation. 2022 last quarter, the OVP spent 16 million for maintenance of safe houses. This was followed by 2023 First quarter, another 16 million for maintenance of safe houses. This was followed by 2023 second quarter, another 16 million for maintenance of safe houses. And finally, 2023 third quarter, this time 5 million maintenance of safe houses. The only conclusion that I can derive from 2022 last quarter to the third quarter of 2023, meron kayong informants or assets whom you are keeping in the safe houses 
that the OVP is renting. The question, however, is why suddenly, pagdating ng last quarter ng 2023, wala nang expenditure for safe houses or not even for confidential fund? San po napunta yung informant at assets nyo, which you have been keeping in your safe houses from the last quarter of 2022 to the third quarter of 2023. Yun po ba inabandon ng OVP? Yun po ba biglang nag-disappear? I understand that you have no personal knowledge, but at least please give us a reasonable interpretation of what happened. Why suddenly in the last quarter of 2023 na wala ang maintenance ng safe houses which means na wala din ang informants at saka assets. Where did they go? Ms. Villa del Rey? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, I cannot answer the question since I don't have really knowledge of the utilization of the confidential fund. Attorney Sanchez? Your Honor, I'm, I also apologize him as a answer of Mr. Ms. Villa del Rey, Your Honor. Mr. Kevin? Say, Mr. Chair, I have no knowledge or participation in the utilization of the confidential funds. Ms. Rabago? Say, Mr. Chair, I don't have a personal knowledge on the utilization of the confidential Ms. funds. Ms. Villa del Rey, can you at least tell us who has the personal knowledge over these matters? Based on the JC and based on the issue ones of cash advance, it is the special disbursing officer. Who is? The accountable officer. Can you please cite the name of the special disbursing officer? As shown in the check, Your Honor, it is Ms. Gina Acosta. And apart from Ms. Gina Acosta, who else has personal knowledge over these matters? I don't have idea, Your Honor. And you confirm that Gina Acosta, the special disbursing officer, whom you described earlier as confidential official with salary grade 24, is one of those who were subpoenaed and who did not appear. Tama po ba? Tama po, Your Honor. Thank you. I have nothing further, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, uh, Congresswoman. Uh